Have you lost someone due to smoking? Yes, I lost my grandfather. Okay, quite unfortunately, I lost um, an uncle man while I was growing up to lung cancer. Yes, I've lost, I lost many people, uh, including family members. And yes, and I've seen how that happened in front of my eyes. I've seen how people is dying um, as they smoke, and I see them like carrying oxygen tanks and at the same time smoking. Every year, nearly 8 million early deaths are attributed to smoking. 80% of these deaths are of people living in low to middle income countries. To put that into context, the death toll attributed to smoking in low and middle income countries is double the number of people who have died from malaria, HIV, and COVID-19 combined. In 2020, the union, funded by former New York City mayor and current billionaire Michael Bloomberg, called for a blanket ban on all nicotine vapor and heated tobacco products to the countries that need these alternatives the most. Are safer nicotine products available where you live? Vaping was banned uh, uh, September last year. A ban never uh, works, right? Uh, it's never worked anywhere in the world. So the only thing it did was it, dry, it drove it underground. And uh, so, so it's freely available in India, uh, vaping products. Uh, unfortunately, uh, without any regulation of any kind. Should people who smoke in your country have the same opportunity to access potentially life-saving, safer nicotine products as people living in high-income countries? Oh well, yes, of course. It doesn't matter where you live. You know, it, you, you are human, right? I mean, we are all human. It doesn't matter. We should have the basic human rights. It doesn't matter if you come from a rich country or LMICs or where you know all poor country third country first country we should have the same basic human right this union's document when, when bans are best uh makes or, or at least the consequences that now you have two kinds of human beings the class a and the class b class a living in in, in uk in, in in first world countries and they have access to safer uh, safer products Class B citizens, uh, the ones from, from low or middle income countries, we are not entitled to, 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 to have safer alternatives. So our lives are, 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 are not as important. The problem with Mr. Bloomberg is that he's a vaping prohibitionist. And that worries me that, you know, if people take a moralistic stance on, on nicotine, then they are, they are denying people who actually need to stop smoking a way out of, of their, their smoking habit. Blanket bans in low and middle income countries are the results of philanthropic colonialism, where short term funding for coercive and underperforming tobacco control policies is presented to government officials as the only way forward. By virtue of being a top down policy decision, the people most affected by strict nicotine regulations are excluded from the process. While organizations like the Union and the World Health Organization continue to paint people who smoke as victims of incumbent tobacco companies and incapable of making decisions for themselves, it is the paternalistic anti-nicotine policies that are taking away people's right to choose better alternatives to smoking. Vaping saved my life. At the same time, there is a general scientific consensus that smoke-free tobacco and nicotine products are low-risk alternatives to smoking. This is a product that can transform health. Uh, smokers, not all smokers, but enough smokers to matter, find electronic cigarettes an effective substitute for smoking, and if they make the complete switch to electronic cigarettes, health-wise they achieve pretty much what they'd achieve as if they quit smoking completely. So the challenge is to get as many smokers to try and go down that route, not to start trying to restrict or prevent uptake of electronic cigarettes. They're a game changer. There's no going back from that. The whole market in nicotine delivery has been radicalized by these products. And I just hope that there are more and even more exciting products on the way. Denying people access to these life-saving options based on income can only be considered discriminatory.
Nothing about us without us. Nothing about us without us. Nothing about us without us. Nothing about us without us.